Widely known that in Hollywood, as in a lot of other fields across America, uh, women are generally paid less than men. But uh, in a recent interview, Emma Stone revealed how it was actually uh, her male co-stars that made certain sacrifices to allow her to receive something approaching uh, pay equity. Uh, she's doing interviews about this uh, upcoming movie, Battle of the Sexes, where she plays uh, Billie Jean King. And she had this to say, at our best right now, we're making 80 cents to the dollar. In Hollywood, it's a difficult system because it depends on the kinds of roles you're a part of, the size of your role, how much the movies make at the box office, and so much of that changes your pay throughout your career. So I go more to the blanket issue that women in general are making four fifths at best. So that's sort of like the base level. But she said, in my career so far, I've needed my male co-stars to take a pay cut so that I may have parity with them. And that's something they do for me because they feel it's what's right and fair. That's something that's also not discussed necessarily that our getting equal pay is going to require people to selflessly say that's what's fair. And interesting that this is not just a thing that, that theoretically helps out inside of one movie because of the way that you can parlay pay to later roles. She said, if my male co-star who has a higher quote than me but believes we are equal takes a pay cut so that I can match him, that changes my quote in the future and changes my life. She added that she's been so grateful to her male co-stars who have adjusted their pay rates. Now she, as of right now, I haven't seen where she's identified any. Um, which makes sense because theoretically identifying one or two would identify that the others hadn't. And I'm sure that this is more widespread than just the experience of Emma Stone, uh, but that is a good thing to see. It shouldn't be necessary. It should be the film companies that are accurately paying people for what they contribute to a movie, what they bring and all that. Um, but until they catch up, thankfully there are some actors at least who are stepping up. Did Gosling, yes That's or the no? immediate I mean, thing that you think about. Like, yeah, yeah. Come on, who won the Oscar? I would guess Oscar? yes, but we don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. true. That's um, true. So, uh, uh, yeah, I thought it was Gosling too. Which, if it is, bless his heart. We could, could be but, Keaton. So, nah, it's not Keaton. <laughs> so it's not Keaton. It's definitely not Keaton. <laughs> he had a small role in that movie. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so th this is not that easy, right? Because and Emma Stone acknowledges that. She's like, look, there's a lot of factors. There's how much money did your previous movies make. Um, you know how much perceived star power do you have based on some on just BS gut instinct of the executive, which is where the sexism could come into play. Some is actual metrics. So let's say that it was Ryan Gosling. We don't know. We're guessing here. Well, Ryan Gosling, I think, arguably is a bigger star than Emma Stone. On the other hand, Emma Stone's a giant star, and in this movie that she's playing. A woman who fought for equal rights. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I how is that name. for ironic? I don't know if, what her pay here was, but if, if they didn't offer her equal pay to as Stephen Carell, who's playing Bobby Riggs, when the whole point of the movie is that women are as good, mm -hmm. if not better, in some places, and obviously she won that match, that would be deeply <laughs> ironic. And she, she arguably now off of La La Land is the bigger star. And you almost never hear of the woman getting paid more than the man. And so, and her point, by the way, is she sticks up for men completely. She's like, if it wasn't for the guys who had done that, I never would be in this place. Right. So she's like, I always want to include men in the conversation and their voices and here, etc. So she's great on in, in every way. But she says, look at the big picture. So on any case, it's hard to decide why they did that at that particular movie. But on average. Female actress, female actors or actresses get paid eighty percent of what guys in similar stature get paid. Right. Yeah. But I mean, then that goes up to the top. Even like you're talking Nicole Kidman too. I mean, and and Angelina Jolie. I can't remember the exact stat, but like not getting as much as a Tom Cruise or not even a Tom Cruise. Like you know, like a a lesser you know, I don't know, Ryan Reynolds or something like this. Mm -hmm. It's like. What, what? You know, so poor Ryan Reynolds just getting thrown under the bus. <laughs> Don't He's mean a to throw star. Ryan did Reynolds you watch under Deadpool? He's a I great did. movie. <laughs> <laughs> but but just to say, I mean, we're talking millions here. It's all because like no no one really deserves this amount of money. However, being that they do already make this, um, I think it's it's sad to me that it's on individuals to try and fill the void back yeah. to you know. The story of of like the you know democracy vouchers. It's just like we've come to this. We've come to individual actors having to take it upon themselves because their industry just can't you know give equal pay to try and you know equilibria. What am I trying to say? You know, bring I mean, equilibrium. It, it yeah, bring equilibrium. You know. <laughs> Yes. I get yeah. paid more than Jank. <laughs> <laughs> and what's always it makes no sense to me is is there there are some areas 
where theoretically women make more. You can think of some particular things that are clearly like it's a male audience or it's a male clientele or something. And it always seemed to me like outside of maybe action movies, if anybody is being sort of incentivized to come in and watch a movie based on the gender of a person there, aren't men gonna be more manipulated by that than women? Like aren't men gonna go to see an Emma Stone more than women would go to see a Ryan, uh, Ryan Gosling or a Ryan Reynolds? I just, it seems like the sort of area where there should naturally be more equality than there already is. Yeah. And Hollywood is supposed to be such a liberal place. The fact that there is such a pay disparity there, like how can you imagine progress on some far more conservative areas if even in the arts, in liberal California, we can't get equality. I think it's interesting where like the managers come in. Like you know, everyone's just like every, it's a you know Hollywood is just kind of a feeding frenzy off of the stardom of you know celebrities. But it's like, are are these people not being represented? Like, is it mm. just sort of an industry wide agreement? Like, yeah, but oh, you know, sure. And I think your point is well taken, Ryan. I mean, uh, Ryan Gosling is arguably more of a star than Emma Stone, but like maybe not anymore. Maybe not anymore, right? But after when they that. cast that movie, exactly yes. when they cast it. But it's just like, is that a, is there just sort of that agreement among the industry and among managers and and reps to just like, well, yeah, you know, and woman, so, right, woman. And when you talk about sexism, it doesn't mean, and this is where people uh, maybe on the right wing instead of take like great offense, it doesn't mean you're an evil person, you hate women, and so you wanted to make sure they got less. It just might be the the. Stereotypes that we have in our heads that we don't even realize we have. Like you, maybe we all assume that Ryan, including me, assume that Ryan Gosling is the bigger star because we've been taught that the big stars are guys: right. Tom Cruise, Will Smith, whoever, right? Right. And so then we make that assumption, and when executives make that assumption, it has huge consequences. And so to John's point, it's you know there's a talking point about liberal Hollywood, liberal Hollywood. No, some of the actors are definitely liberal, no question about that. But the people who make the final decisions are the executives, yeah. and they and they are executives in giant multi-billion-dollar corporations. So they make decisions based on the bottom line, and oftentimes very conservative actors. In that case, I don't mean <laughs> as in stage, but I mean as in people taking action. Scott Bayo. Uh, <laughs> so that's a good counterpoint that not, not a lot of actors are, are liberal. That's why you have to find a Scott Bayo. You got to go reach all the way down to a Scott Bayo. Uh, but um, but yes, the executives are oftentimes very conservative yeah. and not at all what is cast as liberal Hollywood. Help us build independent media together. Come join us. Tytnetwork.com/slash/join.